Well, good evening. Um, so I am a little late on getting the continuing education out because I um, kind of lost my voice this past week. And so I kind of found most of it. And I wanted to make sure that you guys get um, this week's um, continuing education because I think it's important for me to keep going. And I like being able to bring you some information that may, you may or may not know. So thank you for joining my continuing education. And I'm Diana Hinkle. I do this the first and third, third Tuesday, not Thursday, first and third Tuesday of each month at 7 p.m. Pacific time so that you can <clears throat> learn more about your essential oils that maybe you can find online, maybe you can't find online. Uh, a lot of us are very savvy when it comes to finding information um, just by doing a search, but there are still some of us that wanna hear from somebody else and learn from them. And so hopefully I'm one of those go-to persons. So thank you for joining me. And tonight we're gonna to talk about um, Douglas Fir. Now, Douglas Fir, uh, since I live in the Pacific Northwest, we have it everywhere. We're the evergreen state. So Douglas Fir is one of those uh, trees that are everywhere, they exist everywhere. And so we never go completely brown. Um, we do have some seasons here, but typically it's not a definite um, summer, you know, spring, summer, fall, and winter, <clears throat> because very seldom do I get um, the snow. But for um, the, the conifer tree like um, Douglas fir, in the Northwest, it has been used for, um, throughout history um, with the Indians for a lot of medicinal reasons. And of course, Douglas fir tree is a huge hit when it comes to the Christmas tree. So during the holiday seasons, um, a lot of people like to put the tree up in their home and it smells wonderful. If you've never had that experience of having a Douglas fir tree in your home at the holiday season, um, if you, even if you get it in a small living one, it's the aroma is just so invigorating. It's, it's very um, soothing to the soul. And, and it's so good for so many things. So we're going to go over that. So again, this is about Douglas fir. And it comes as this little tiny bottle. It comes in, this is a five mil bottle. <clears throat> and of course, this is doTERRA's um, uh, Doug fir. And this one's almost gone. <laughs> um, needless to say, it's used a lot. What are some of the top health issues that it can help with. Well, first of all, what are its top priorities or properties within it? So every essential oil has this signature. And by the way, I'm not here to uh, diagnose, treat, or cure anything. All I'm here is giving you information that you can digest and then you take it from there and decide if this is a product that you want to try for yourself. So the top, top priority, or <clears throat> sorry, Right. See, I'm still trying to find my voice and my words. <laughs> um, the properties that are within or the constituents of the specific, specific essential oil, it's an antioxidant, it's an analgesic, it's an uh, antimicrobial, uh, it's an antiseptic, <clears throat> it's an astringent, it's a diuretic, and it's an explorator, it's a laxative, it's a sedative, it's also very stimulating, and as a tonic. Or, um, so that little bottle packs a big punch about what it can do and what it can provide for us. So like the anti, or excuse me, the um, astringent. If you're bleeding, this can help in coagulating the blood. Okay. So how, what else can it do? So we look at the brain, uh, mental fog, 
or we have that low energy, you can apply it to your temples, which is right here, okay? Um, you can apply it to the forehead here, and you can apply it to the pulse points if you want, which is your wrists. Now, when you're applying essential oils to your head, be very mindful not to get them in your eyes, because if you do, I promise you won't go blind, but you're going to tear up. So you want to use a carrier oil like a fractionated carpeted oil, which I love, and spread it around the eye, not in the eye. Close your eye. And then also close your eyes because you're going to tear up. So let it dissipate. 10, 15 minutes later, you're going to be just fine. Um, but don't wash out with water because water is a driver. So it will actually penetrate it faster and it'll actually get into the eye farther. Not that it's going to harm that, but we want to just let it go away on its own. <clears throat> and I know most of us um, have been taught when we get something in the eye to flush it out. Well, in this case, essential oils, when you add water, is flushing. I mean, it's not flushing. It's a driver instead of flushing. So we don't want to do that. Anything with fats, you know, have coconut oil, any oil that you have sitting in your cupboard, um, or a yogurt, or a good milk, not 2%, 1% has to be a good milk with fat in it. Um, <clears throat> and so you can use that on the eye, okay? Um, so applying it to the forehead, to the temples, helps in lifting that fogginess and, and giving us and retrieving that enthusiasm. Um, it can help with depression. It can help with congestion. It can help with muscle fatigue uh, and soreness. It can help with uh, constipation, help with um, uh, skin irritations and cuts. So for depression, how would you use it for that? Um, you, again, apply it to forehead, temples, the back of the neck. So there's like a little triangle back there right at the base of your neck. That's where you'd want to put your essential oils. Why? Because that's the kind of the center to the whole entire body. And <clears throat> it's going to get to where it needs to go. You can also smell it, which is another way of getting re, um, re-stimulating your mood, okay, or changing your mood. Now, to smell it, it's really interesting because you would think that the essential oil is now like a Douglas fir, but honestly, it doesn't. It has that little bit in there, but it actually smells to me, it smells more like an anesthetic. So like an antiseptic, um, and because it has those properties, right? But when you smell it, you might smell something entirely different than I am, am smelling because everything reacts to our body's chemistry. So like when someone smells any kind of blend, they might pick up on a specific aroma in that blend. Like say wild orange, for instance, if it's got wild orange in there, or somebody else might smell the patchouli instead, or they might smell the vanilla instead. It just depends on what your body's doing and what it needs, so it changes. And I think that's what's so fascinating about essential oils, where we can change a mood by the snap of the finger, by just taking the lid off and then just deep breath. But you want to do it several times. That's how we get our brain to go, wait a minute, what am I supposed to be doing here? And it thinks about it. It calms down long enough to go, oh, I'm supposed to change my mood. I need to refocus. And that's what we're doing when we smell essential oils. It gives our brain a way to relax and help with um, rebooting or just going, hey, I got this. Okay. So for congestion and sinus issues, so obviously the one would be to smell it. That, that's the number one, right? 
<clears throat> you can also apply it to the chest, uh, right at the top of the chest. But when you're applying it to your skin, I would um, recommend using a fractionated coconut oil or a carrier oil of some kind. Um, when you use like olive oil and those kinds of oils, they're not fat soluble. They're too big of molecules and they don't soak into the skin. So you want something with a small molecule like your fractionated coconut oil, not the kind you cook with, not the solid kind, this is a liquid kind. Or jojoba oil, sunflower seed oil, something that the, the fat molecules aren't so big and it actually soaks into the skin, okay? But you can apply it to the throat right here. If you're congested, you can come up along the jawline as well from the ear down along the jawline. You can put it over the bridge of the nose, or you can put some right here underneath the nose so that you're consistently smelling it. That will help with that respiratory. And if you've got muscle fatigue or muscle soreness, you blend uh, Douglas fir with wintergreen, and you have a really nice combination. Even if you don't have the wintergreen, use the Douglas fir. There again, if you apply it to your skin, Try to use a carrier oil, it'll go farther that way, like one drop of your essential oil to about hmm, maybe uh, five, six, seven drops of your, um, your carrier oil. And that should be enough, um, about maybe half a teaspoon. Now, the smaller the person or like the smaller in age, the more carrier oil that you do want, okay? For our children, it would be just put it on their skin or on their feet because our feet have the biggest pores. It will get to where it goes, needs to go. And we have the least amount of sensitivity in our feet. So typically we're not going to have a problem. But if you know you have a child that's okay with using the essential oils, that's fine. But just make sure that you're using the carrier oil along with that as well. Um, and so when you're using it for your muscle support, then make sure that you are, you know, apply it where it's needed, okay? Um, or you can, you know, because typically if you're going to store muscle, we want to, we want to go to the problem area, <laughs> if our thigh or hip or shoulders, whatever it is, okay? <clears throat> um, the same with when we're looking at like arthritic or, um, you know, arthritic um, or, or those kinds of issues with our joints is apply it directly on the joints. Now, again, the older we are, we can get thin skin as well. So again, I'm going to say, use a carrier oil with it. It will actually go further and it actually will, um, uh, you'll get a better benefit by using the carrier oil versus just by itself. But most people can use it neat, meaning by itself without a carrier oil. Same with, you know, with making it as to um, using it as an, an analgesic, you can use that essential oil to help with wound care <clears throat> in the same area. Now, um, highly dilute it unless you are a diehard because you never know when something's going to be a little bit on the skinny side, even though it's not supposed to be, but it can be. So you want to make sure that you're protecting that, okay? Because that's not what you want to do. Um, and for our skin, it's very soothing to our skin. And because it's soothing to our skin, we can um, uh, add grapefruit oil to that. Now, if you are on um, certain medications, you cannot have grapefruit juice, but grapefruit oil or essential oil is, should be fine for you. Um, if you're not sure, at least please consult your doctor to double check. Okay, don't just take my word for it. Um, <clears throat> and of course, you know, anytime you're looking at any essential oils, helping us in changing our mood, changing our behavior, and helping with whatever we got going on. So just with these few things that I've talked about, you can see why our Native Americans loved this particular tree because it had so many medicinal value for them and it was in an abundance. But this is really, really fun. 
our Douglas firs and soil, or doTERRA's Douglas firs and soil, doesn't come from the Pacific Northwest. It comes from New Zealand. I know. You're going, what? New Zealand? How in the heck does Douglas fir essential oil come from New Zealand? Well, it come to find out that Douglas fir trees were brought over to or taken to New Zealand and has become an invasive species and it's choking out their native species in, um, in New Zealand. And so they didn't know what to do with it. But they found out that there's a <laughs> bottom line is Douglas fir has a great essential oil, especially when it's young, not when it's older. And, you, and if you know, if you've ever been around a grove where there's a lot of um, Douglas fir, you'll have all these little ones popping up everywhere. Well, they went to doTERRA, the, the uh, New Zealand, um, uh, the, 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 the big wigs, and they said, hey, how can you help us? Can you help us? And so this is what, in doing the research and doing all the studies, this is what they found. So we get an essential oil that is good for us and has all these great great properties in it and it's helping New Zealand get rid of an invasive species. So we're being good stewards of a country. We're helping them and they're helping us. And we get something that is an excellent choice for helping us with the things that we have going on. So I think that is the utmost and the most best value anybody could have because we're working in partnerships and that partnership helps them along with us. I think it's awesome. And um so it and it and even goes beyond that. And so I really love and I really hope that you'll do some more research on this particular essential oil and how doTERRA is, is helping um, New Zealand. And that's what we're really all about. It's not just about getting a good product. doTERRA has many great products, but it's also about being good stewards on this earth. And it's also about helping communities everywhere around the globe. And whether that's a small community or a large community, it doesn't matter because we're gonna go in, doTERRA's gonna go in and help them learn how to be more sustainable how to be um, more better stewards of, of the earth and have a bigger farm and how they can survive better because they get fair market value and they um and they get it's fair trade and it also gives them the money that a lot of brokers out there never give them they'll give them a one-time payment and then say see you later and then that's it that's where there's a big problem. Well, doTERRA is changing that picture. And I think that's the absolute best thing you could ever do. Now, what does it blend well with? There are a number of different oils that you can put together. Well, you like the smell of, okay? What are you trying to do? Put it in your diffuser, try Douglas fir with some lime, and you'll get an awesome fragrance for respiratory. Maybe the whole family is sick, and so you need to put something in the diffuser, or you want to do um, have a little bit of uplift in it, add a little wild orange. You can't go wrong with that <laughs> ever. <clears throat> but bergamot is is a good choice to put with um, uh, your Douglas fir. You have cedar wood. Um, there is a Siberian fir that we you could use with it. Vetiver is another one, and again, wild orange. So vetiver, it's like, do you want a really good sleep at night? Put some duck fur and vetiver together. I promise that you're going to go to sleep, <laughs> especially with the vetiver. And if you never tried that before, oh my gosh, vetiver is like, <laughs> I, I did the mistake one day of making, doing a blend in my diffuser and I put one, just one drop of vetiver in there. <laughs> and later on, I'm like, yeah, I just, 
why do I feel like I just need to go and take a nap? I don't ever feel like this. And then it dawned on me. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. That I, you know, I put that one drop of vetiver in the diffuser with some other oils, but it's like nothing for making me want to go sleep. But the vetiver, that was enough to make me want to go sleep. <laughs> like, okay. So keep that in mind. But I also want to share with you what the emotional side of Douglas fir is. So Douglas fir helps us in um, recognizing generational um, junk and generational, um, as they put it, wisdom. And um, so Douglas fir helps us with um, generational patterns that are burdened by family issues. Maybe that's you. Maybe you had, um, growing up, you had all these things going on and um, you want to stop the chain. You want to stop what's been happening. And Douglas Fur is one of those that can help you cut the cord, per se, okay? To help you with new growth, with new life, um, and um, assisting you to uh, own your own conscience and be you. Don't have to chain yourself to what your ancestors did or what your parents did or, or whoever it is. You don't have to be that way. You can get things, you can get through it. And Douglas Fir is one of those that can help you get through those things. Um, so we want to bring out that healing process of um, that generational negative emotion. And, um, you know, the, that hurt and that um, the blame and the um, feeling ashamed or feeling that we left out, feeling, um, feeling the way that we just shouldn't feel like. Because we all have the gift in this world. It's just finding what that gift is and bring it to the world. <clears throat> so we want to help in respecting our elders and, and learn from the past. Not keep the past. We want to learn from the past so that we don't make those same mistakes. Because our elders, our parents, our ancestors, they all have all this wisdom, but a lot of times we don't want to sit down long enough to listen to that wisdom and find out what we can do differently. Um, you might combine that with um, white fur, and you can also combine it with another oil that's called pedigree. And that's another one that's really interesting oil. And it comes from the bitter orange tree. And pedigree is like your, it's a secondary to frankincense. But inhale it, put it in the diffuser, place a couple of drops in your hand. So like when you are, um, so you would take your oil, take the lid off, put some in your hand, put a drop, rub it around. To smell it and do that several times and also think to yourself give your brain a positive command okay whatever that looks like for you and so that you can go forward and move forward in a positive direction and help retrain your brain because that's what we're doing is retraining the brain so that the chemicals that we, those, that negative conglomerate soup that we create, we want to get rid of. We want to get rid of all the negative stuff, all the things that create, that negative, um, negativism creates in our body. So every single system, our nervous system, our, um, respiratory system, everything is connected to what we think, 
what we say and what we do every single day. Now, another way to do this is to put, um, you can also drop um, one to three drops on the base of the spine or on the bottom of your feet. Okay, so like, go to bed. Give yourself an affirmation and put the oil on your feet. And if you are, if you're God-fearing, say a prayer and then go to sleep and find out how refreshed you'll be when you wake up in the morning. What changed while you were sleeping? So I want to leave that with you to kind of digest. I hope you get some information out of this. And I hope this leaves you feeling more confident and knowing that this is also something you can clean your home with because it's an antiseptic. And all you have to do is have a spray bottle, some drops of essential oil in there, and the rest of water. Shake it every time, spray. Shake it every time, spray. And you clean your home. How do you feel? So you guys, I hope, will have a beautiful blessed day and evening. And I hope that this finds and brings you more joy to your own home. So you guys have have a good one and we'll see you on the re <clears throat> we'll see you again. <clears throat> there went my voice again. Um, we'll see you on August the twenty what wait wait first and second sixteenth. So on the 16th, we will see you again, same place, same channel. We'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody, and enjoy.